Hello there, Booktube. I am here today with a review of Water for Elephants by Sarah Gruen. This is a gorgeous book. Um, my feelings about it have slightly changed because it's been about a week or two since I read it. And my feelings have slightly changed, but I'm going to go with how I felt after I finished reading it and while I was reading it, and I loved it. It is really, really gorgeously done. This is about the circus, pretty much. It's I thought from, because I only knew about the film before I bought this one, and I thought from looking at the film trailer that it was this epic romance, kind of like Moulin Rouge, and in a way it is, but the romance in this is not the central thing. Um, there's more to it than that, which I thought was really good, because so easily people buy into the romance and don't build the rest of the story necessarily. The romance was sort of a sideline that, yeah, it... it fueled a few things but the main storyline is the circus basically and this is about Jacob Jankowski he is training to be a vet when we first meet him and um finds out his parents have died in a car crash the day before he takes his final exam um ends up running away from his final exam and jumping on a train that is a circus um and then he gets employed as the circus veterinarian and it's just about life in the circus in I think it's the 1930s this is set um so the only thing I would say about this and I wouldn't say it's something that would mean that you wouldn't want to read this but there is quite graphic scenes of um animal cruelty because obviously the circus in those days it happened a lot sadly um I hate that kind of thing it really sticks with me but I, I still read this and I really enjoyed it. There were some bits that were a bit painful to read and a bit upsetting, so warning about that. But it's it's well worth a read other than that. I mean, it's, it's gorgeous. Um, it's strange, I've never really read a book based in the circus before and it was just so magical and like, ugh, ugh. But um, it's also about a lot of sort of the background bad stuff that went on in the circus. As I say, there was the animal cruelty um, and people are red-lighted by the um, owners of this circus, Uncle Al and August is sort of the main menagerie man. Um, they red light people in the night if they can't afford to feed them or if they're becoming useless or they're ill or something. They will chuck them off the train when it's still moving and most of these men will die. Um, People know it's happening, but they kind of deny it to themselves. People just disappear in the night. And um, we know it happens because Jacob gets threatened with it when he first gets on the train. Um, so it's 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 pretty good. It discusses things about the circus in those days that were probably kind of hush-hush. Um, and it's just excellent. It is beautifully written as well. It alternates between chapters of Jacob in this um, nursing home waiting to go to the circus because the circus has come to town and that obviously gets him thinking about other stuff. Um, the animals in this are beautifully written as well. There's an elephant in there, Rosie. She's just so lovely and just makes you want to love elephants forever. Um, I just can't praise this book enough and I'm actually going to read you what, as soon as I started reading this, I was just like, ah! So I'm going to read you the page that made me think it was just gorgeous. Because the writing is just something very special. Very special indeed. I am 90, or 93, one or the other. When you're five, you know your age down to the month. Even in your 20s, you know how old you are. I'm 23, you say, or maybe 27. But then in your 30s, something strange starts to happen. It's a mere hiccup at first. An instant of hesitation. How old are you? Oh, I'm... You start confidently, but then you stop. You were going to say 33, but you're not. You're 35. And then you're bothered, because you wonder if this is the beginning of the end. It is, of course, but it's decades before you admit to it. You start to forget words. They're on the tip of your tongue, but instead of eventually dislodging, they stay there. You go upstairs to fetch something, and by the time you get there, you can't remember what it was you were after. You call your child by the names of all your other children, and finally the dog, before you get to his. Sometimes, you forget what day it is, and finally, you forget the year. Actually, it's not so much that I've forgotten, it's more like I've stopped keeping track. We're past millennium, that's much, that much I know. Such a fuss and bother over nothing. All those young folks clucking and worrying about buying canned food because somebody was too lazy to leave space for four digits instead of two. But that could have been last month or three years ago. And besides, what does it really matter? 
what's the difference between three weeks or three years or even three decades of mushy peas, tapioca and depends undergarments. I am 90 or 93, one or the other. I'll leave it there. Bye.